Hello all and welcome back. So today we're talking about 3D printers and how to adjust these wheels because they're not all the same. Let's take a look. And if you're suffering from this problem, if you can listen, you can see I'm rocking it this way. And now I'm going to tilt it this way. You can hear that's not adjusted properly. And what that will do, that will badly affect your print quality. So when you see on forums, people say you need to tighten your eccentric nuts. Which one of the three do you have to choose? So on a standard type back plate, this one actually had four. You can see I've taken one off to better represent um, a standard back plate. You can see two of the wheels have a smooth spacer block here and here and the one on the bottom has a hexagonal nut and this is the one you need to very very slightly adjust now I'm going to put on the screen what these nuts look like because I doubt I don't think I've had to zoom into this but you can see here that the hole that the bolt goes through is off center so when you turn that very gradually it affects the distance between the face of these wheels and the face of that wheel and that then makes this well it makes all three wheels grip the profile to stop twisting motion so what I like to do with these nuts the eccentric nuts you can see here I've marked the face here and that is the face which is telling me when that is looking at me that has the least resistance on the wheel so if you're assembling the wheels you want this to be facing you so when you then slide the wheels on the track it goes on easier and you, you should be able to push these cartridges or carriages and they should be able to move and that's a good indication that Either it's too loose, <laughs> in this case it is, or you're getting just about right. So, what do you need to adjust these? We well, need a spanner, and they normally come with the printer. So this is a 10mm spanner. And when you're adjusting these, how can I demonstrate it? I'm going to put this up right here. So let me get this spanner pretty much I'm going to do it down here so when you're adjusting these let me just zoom out a tad when you're adjusting these obviously this nut can turn around 180 degrees and then that will be its fullest adjustment but you don't want to do that because then you'll be squashing the wheels together when you're adjusting these nuts it's a very very gradual um, adjustment so if you can see my spanner I'm going to adjust the nut as if this was on my printer there did you see it I actually moved that spanner and I hardly move <laughs> you watch out here and I'm going to adjust it again that was too much I'm going to move it back it's just gentle if you're doing this much that's too much you want to do little bits at a time because you need to prevent flat wheels and flat wheels will happen if you rotate this nut too much and the compression on these three wheels on the profile is too much and what you'll find is you'll probably be able to print fine for that day and then when your printer's at rest say overnight you haven't used it that tension is on three spots on the wheels and overnight you'll get what I call flat wheels so an important point to note before you start 3d printing the next morning with the power off just move your carriages back and forwards you only have to move it that much and it, it's impossible to demonstrate on the camera but if you move it and you get one wheel rotation so how can I just mark this if I just mark this here so one wheel, wheel rotation is from, from here 
to there. So I've moved it about 50 millimeters and that gives me his one wheel rotation. So every time I start 3D printing, I get all my carriages which have wheels and all I do is I move it about 100 millimeters one way, 100 millimeters the back way. And you shouldn't feel at the like, around the 50 meter mark, you shouldn't feel clonk, clonk, clonk. And that's the flat spots that have generated overnight rotating round and ending up back where they were. So if you do suffer from that, you need to release the pressure on your adjusting nut. And again, it's just a little tweak, a few, well, not even one degree at a time, you know, and that's enough. So this at the moment is too loose. You know, I can, I can wiggle that. So without being able to look at the nut, I'm just gonna move it. Now that's much better, and you, you saw how much I didn't move it, if you like. I can still feel a rocking motion, so I'm rocking it this way at the moment. Look at that spanner, what have I done with that? So look again at, let's get that better in the shot. I'm just going to adjust it, so let me try and get something in line so you can see where I'm adjusting. So that's it, adjustment done. Still a bit of a wiggle. Still a bit of a wiggle. Still a bit of a wiggle. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to check that these bolts are actually secure because this has just come out the packet. So this is quite a cheap one I got off Amazon and you can see it's cheap because these Securing nuts, well, sorry, securing bolts should come through the nuts, but they don't. They finish almost before the nylock state uh, part of the nut, so it's not very good. So I'm just going to check that these non-adjustable wheels are tight. Now you don't have to do it tight; they just got to be firm. So that isn't. I need to probably do it this way. No. Let me rest the spanner on the table. So I'm just going to nip this bolt up just a little bit. They were tight, so this one was slightly loose. So I'm going to slide that back on. And that's, that's made the difference. So that one was very slightly loose. And what I'm actually going to do, because this is such a poor detail, if you turn it this way, you can see that the nut the bolt that comes through here doesn't protrude past the nylock so because these these are hard to see when they're on your printer i'm going to get some new uh what are they five mil bolts and make sure the bolts come through um so that's just a point to note because i don't want that coming loose so that i can't now rock it this way now i'm going to try tilting it that's firm so I can still push it and it does move on its own steam but then stop. Another test I like to do is when it's on the printer is just feel I'm holding the carriage and I can just turn the wheel without the carriage being pulled out my fingers and that gives me an indication amongst the three wheels. So that's what I call the slip test. Like here, I can do it easier here. The slip test, I can move the wheels without the carriage being pulled along. And that's given me a good indication that the pressure is enough to keep the carriage from wiggling. Look, I can't wiggle that now, and I can't wiggle it from a side to side. But it's not too tight to give me the flat wheel syndrome. I do have another video which I'll link in, which tells you a different problem I had on my 5 Plus where I'd got flat wheels overnight and I just couldn't work out what it was. But see the video, because I don't want to confuse you on this one. This is a, a, a video for newer people. So yeah, it's very important to ingest this nut in very small increments. So when you're moving your spanner, it's like a one degree at a time, if that. Um, and then check that you can move the carriage. It will have 
more resistance on your carriages because you would have the drive belt going back to the step motor. On here, I've got no drive belt. But yeah, let me know in the comments below if this has helped you. Hey, <laughs> no one likes tight nuts. <laughs> and um, it's important that you don't over tight because say, when you, pre when you start printing in the morning, just run your carriages up and down. They should feel smooth. You shouldn't hear after f about 50 mil feel a notch and that's the flat spot that you've generated overnight and the way to get rid of the flat spot if it's not too severe you can just move the carriages backs and forwards like this for 10 times and that flat spot will disappear but then you need to take some tension off your nut now if you've marked it like i did with the marker pen and I what I actually do I use a hacksaw on mine so you can just see here I put hacksaw cut because eventually this this you can see this the black does wear off and I know when I see the hacksaw mark it's at its weakest so that's it yeah another good video hope it helps some of the beginners because 3d printing it's not like 2d printing is it on a, a uh, you know word document when you print it and that you just send it the printer and it prints there's so many so many tolerances you have to get right and if you get this wrong it can really affect your print and uh, we all need to start on the same hymn sheet and uh, it makes your life a lot easier so that's Andy wishing you a good afternoon and happy printing as ever